A warm welcome to News Now on TV360. I am Fidelia Aguncha. We start with the latest on the invasion which disrupted activities in the Nigerian Senate on Wednesday. The police have arrested Ovie Omoagege, the senator accused of leading some hoodlums to attack the National Assembly. The mace, which signifies a Senate authority, was also stolen by the hoodlums. A statement from the Senate hours after the incident accused Omar Gege, who was suspended last week, of leading the attack. He was arrested by officers of the Abuja Police Command immediately after the Senate resumed plenary. Lawmakers in the upper chamber have now given the Inspector General of Police, Ibrahim Idris, and the Director General of the Department of State Services, Lawa Odara, a 24-hour ultimatum to recover the mace taken from the Senate chamber. The senators, in their reaction to the invasion, described the act as treason and an attempt to overthrow a branch of the federal government of Nigeria by force. Meanwhile, some eminent Nigerians have been reacting to the invasion of the Senate chambers. A former lawmaker, Babatunde Ogala, has criticized the invasion of the National Assembly premises. Ogala also criticized the senators who he says have a role to play in the commotion which disrupted proceedings at the Senate chambers. His views were shared by human rights lawyer Femi Falano, who also condemned the invasion. I think the totality of what has happened with thugs allegedly coming in to forcefully take away the mace of the Senate, which is a symbol of authority of that Senate is, I would say, is most unfortunate. Um, it's only a culmination of the, the rascality that has gone on in the National Assembly for too long. This perhaps is the second time we are seeing such desecration. The last time was under the Tambua Speakership, where it was refused entry into the National Assembly by a policeman. But for talks to get on the floor of the Senate, I think only is the combination and is the height of the rascality that we have seen in the National Assembly. And they have just simply gone full circle. They have just simply gone full circle. It is condemnable, it is unfortunate, but the Senate itself laid the foundation for it. But what is important is that we must operate this country on the basis of the rule of law. If the Senate or the National Assembly has a penchant for committing illegality by suspending its members contrary to the provisions of the Constitution and decided cases in our country, you cannot but have such toggery. The drama at the Senate has also attracted the attention of Nigeria's biggest political parties. The ruling All Progressives Congress has condemned the incident, describing it as an attack on democracy. The party, in a statement, also asked security agencies to take all necessary actions to recover the stolen mace and ensure that the perpetrators and their sponsors are brought to justice. The opposition People's Democratic Party have also reacted to the incident. The party's chairman, Uche Secundus, has said the invasion is the result of the insensitivity of the All Progressives Congress to the security issues in the country. The Nigerian government has now ordered a probe into the incident. The government, in its reaction, said it is shocked by the incident and the snatching of the maze. The Nigerian army has declared five persons wanted in connection with killings in Tankum local government area of Taraba State. The declaration was made by Army spokesperson Brigadier General Texas Chiku in a statement released on Wednesday. The suspects declared wanted by the Army are Tanko Adiku Dantai, Kurusi Danladi, Chindo, Big Olumba, and Chairman Poku. Chiku appealed to the general public to give any useful information to security agencies in order to help accelerate arrest of the suspect. The declaration comes less than a week after troops of the Nigerian army arrested two alleged masterminds of the killings in the Tankum and Osan local government areas of Taraba state.
The defense headquarters has advised leaders not to play politics with the security in the nation. The Director of Defense Information, Brigadier General John Ajim, gave the advice at a briefing in Abuja. He explained that the military had recorded some successes during the operation in some states faced with security issues. According to him, some arrests have been made and ammunition recovered from the suspect who have been handed to the police for interrogation. I'm aware that we are going into um, elective uh, politics and our politicians don't have limits to what they can do or what they will do to get um, to win election. And we need to educate them that we cannot do that with security issues. We don't play politics with lives. So we don't play politics with the military. There is no alternative to the Nigerian military. We have a situation that right now, even the military is overstretched. The, when we are complaining about the military, we don't, we don't put it into a correct perspective. The military is not um, happy that um, almost all the, the internal security uh, operation in the country, we are find ourselves doing that. And, and we have been advocating for the police to be provided with all that they need so that they can take care of their responsibility. And I don't think the police will say we are taking care of their responsibility. Of course, where we go in, evidently, the power, the criminals, they have more power than what the police can contain. And I don't think there is a disagreement among us. A new report by the Social Economic Rights and Accountability Project, SERAP, has revealed that 55 high-profile Nigerians allegedly stole 1.354 trillion naira from the nation's treasury between 2006 and 2013. In a newly launched 112-page report, SERAP explains the dimensions of corruption and catalogues why Nigeria has a small number of convictions in the prosecution of corruption cases. Serap consultant Essa Onoja explained that despite these offences, little is done to prosecute offenders. He listed the causes of delay of high-profile cases in Nigeria as alleged ill health of offenders, immunity clause, which is now used as a license for impunity, loopholes in legal processes, political interference, among others. From the study, uh, the report discovered that between the year 2000 and 2017, that the EFCC secured an average of 100 convictions each year for low-level offenders. So for low-level cases, the EFCC secures average 100 convictions per year. But within the same period, 2000 to 2017, there were only 10 high-profile convictions from a total of 177 high-profile prosecutions conducted. The major impediments or obstacles to enhance conviction rates in high-profile uh, high corruption cases in Nigeria include suspicious withdrawal of cases from investigators and prosecutors, delay tactics by defendants, ambiguous provisions in anti-corruption legislations, suspicious court orders, restraining law enforcement agencies from performing their statutory functions, uh, transfer of judges handling corruption cases. When we raise issues like this, we want to put it in the front burner of public discourse so that those who rule us 
by perhaps listening to the point we are making that in the fight against corruption, certain things still, to be, still need to be put in place so that the fight is effective, efficient, and direct. Also present at the launch was human rights lawyer Femi Palano, who condemned the high level of impunity in Nigeria's judicial system. If you want to invite a big man or a big woman, the EFCC or the ICP writes a polite letter. You are hereby invited to interview by the undersigned. They will put the name of the officer and his phone number. Then when you get that letter, you will call the officer. I am not in Lagos. Can we fix a convenient time that I can see you? Do you understand me? Now, if the man doesn't want to show up at all, he gets a bad lawyer to file an application in court, challenging that invitation letter. I don't want to be investigated. It can only happen in Nigeria. To say you cannot be arrested or investigated. Beside that, if you eventually show up, you are treated with dignity. You are granted bail, and you are asked to look for short teeth. You are not going to be harassed. And if you are then taken to court because the society is accusing judges of covering up the rich, you are asked to go to prison for two or three days so that your application for bail can be taken. Bail has become automatic in Nigeria since the time of Iboris case in Kaduna. You are aware of that? Bail is automatic now. No matter the amount of money involved. But again, turn to the other side of the if you want to arrest a poor man, you don't write a letter. You pounce on him. You invade the house. If you cannot find him, no, if you find him at home, you handcuff him. If there are two or three of them, you can like shame them. You humiliate them in the neighborhood. If they get to the station, wow, you are welcome with beatings. And you haven't been to a police station. Now, unlike the rich, when they are being asked to go to prison, they say, no, we want to go to EFCC cell. You know why? The EFCC cells are the best in Nigeria. Go and find out. The Senate has stepped down the Electoral Act 2010 Amendment Bill, which seeks to reshuffle the sequence of those in a general election. The bill, which was considered for second reading, suffered a setback when several lawmakers Cross party lines who spoke in the debate on it raised various issues against the amendment. The lawmakers resolved that the bill be stepped down and referred to the Senate Committee on Independent National Electoral Commission with a mandate to remove the clauses faulted by President Muhammad Buhari, for which he withdrew his assent. The parts not faulted by the President would be sent back to him for assent. The Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has sworn in seven new resident electoral commissioners. The commissioners who were sworn in by INEC Chairman Mahmoud Yakubu brings the total number of seven recs in the commission to 33. In his remarks, Yakubu expressed confidence that the new recs would contribute to the commission's determination to make the 2019 general elections the best in the country. With a um, track record of service in the academia, public service, and the private sector, it is gratifying to note that you have made positive contributions to society in various ways. I'm equally delighted to note that some of you have managed elections at the national level as resident electoral commissioners. I am confident that you will bring to bear on your new assignment the experience of the recent past that will contribute to our determination to make 2019 the best election in Nigeria so far. As election managers, you must maintain the required openness and consultation. At the same time, you must be very firm and courageous on the side of the law as well as our regulations and guidelines at all times as required of an unbiased umpire. Responding on behalf of the new RECs, 
Shegun Agbaje, representing Equity State, pledged the new commissioners' readiness to justify the confidence reposed in them. He also expressed confidence in the leadership of INEC chairman Mahmoud Yakubu. Usually, the beginning is very uh, humorous like this, particularly for the job that we are about to begin. But how to finish well is the most important part of the assignment. But we are praying that by the grace of God, we shall finish well. The People's Democratic Party, PDP, has accused President Muhammad Buhari of brandishing unconfirmed achievements instead of seeking investment opportunities in the United Kingdom. In a statement released on Tuesday, Kola Ologbodion, National Publicity Secretary of the PDP, said Buhari painted a false picture of Nigeria in a bid to hide the true state of affairs from British Prime Minister Theresa May. Ologbodion described the action of the president as a missed opportunity. The Lagos state government on Tuesday held a town hall meeting with residents in the state. The meeting, which was presided over by Governor Akinwomi Ambodi, was held at the Apapa Amusement Park in Apapa. The governor addressed the residents on issues ranging from traffic decongestion to infrastructure developments. It is the 11th time in his three-year tenure as governor of Lagos State that Akinwomi Ambodi will be holding a town hall meeting of this nature with residents of the state. The town hall meeting provides a platform for residents to interact with the governor and raise issues they need to be resolved. To open proceedings, the governor gives a brief address highlighting the importance of the gathering. It's the ones that we have not done or the ones we have not done well that the town hall conversation should really relate to. So we don't want to waste our time. So basic stuff, the things that we have done in the last three months, combined with the things that we have done in the last three years, we give God the thanks for giving us the chance to be able to do it for our people. So what are those things that we can actually ask the real people to tell us about? Yes, this is an election year, but what we have told ourselves, we will not stop delivering goods of, of, of uh, the, the dividends of democracy to our people. He then touches on the important issues of traffic decongestion in the states, saying he has concluded plans to take over Abat Truck Terminal at Orile Igomu and commence immediate repairs on the terminal to ease the notorious gridlock around the Apapa Axis. The issue of uh, this Apapa gridlock, all the people that are connected to it are here. We are going to be as practical as possible and we try to take a solution away from here so that when we implement it, the real life and status of our papa will come back before the end of this year. Part of the solution, which I'm going to start with before we start doing question and answer, is the Abat truck terminal, which is the Bola Metinubu truck terminal that is in that Ijora. We believe strongly that that's one of our strong solutions to this gridlock. So we've cleared the shanties, and the way we are trying to run it, we'll be able to take at least 3,000 trucks in the park. After his address, a deluge of questions pours in. We congratulate you for doing all what you have been doing in Lagos area and some other area, but we would like you to do something for a papa similar to what you are doing in other uh, local government. The governor then responds, highlighting some of his plans for infrastructure development in the area and the state as a whole. Far Daini Road. So the economic value that this road is going to bring, I can hear from the floor that it will create more social impact and the road will be more impactful on our people than any other thing. And I think we take this on as our additional construction work for this, for this year. 
we want to start using the road and then open it up from um, Aspanda, where is Aspanda? Trade Fair Complex to CMS. So we're going to try before the end, in the next six months or so, to open up the road from Orile Mile 2 to Trade Fair Complex and make sure that we're applying that route with our buses from Trade Fair Complex to CMS. And that will want, because we cannot wait until the road is finished in, to cement. So let's start to use the one that we already have. Governor Ambody addressed the issue of the growing population in Nigeria. He advised residents in Lagos to register for their voters' card so they can prove that Lagos is indeed the most populated state in the country. This coming election is a different one. We want to define once and for all where the population of Nigeria lies. So it's not just about APC or about any other party or about people who are not interested. We want to use the PVC to send a message that the real population is in Lagos State. There are still three more town hall meetings expected to be conducted by the Lagos State Government before the 2019 elections. The Governor is expected to seek another term of office and will need the support of the people. Meetings like this go a long way in fostering better relationship between the government and the electorate. Still watching news now on TV 360. Up next is Business News with Esther Vese. Do stay with us. Um, what's your name? I'm not so there, Morifi. May we check your own list, cause the list with the outside. I'm not so there, your name never had deal. Your name is Honorio Death. You even went as a fashion designer. As you don't come back, so, eh? Now, I won't go as Akobori Ovi. And Ovi won't go as pilots. That is impersonation. My own share for the national cake be that. Mr. Onosode. Mm -mm. Akobori. The Amnesty Program is an intervention project for sustainable economic development of the Niger Delta, which you are a beneficiary of. Lying under pretext for your selfish gain and advantage is robbing others of the same opportunity. And that is an act of corruption, not in my country. Uh. Corruption, not in my country. Stop corruption now. Welcome to Business News. The World Bank has effected a massive cut in its projection for Nigeria's economic growth rate for 2018 to 2.1%, down from 2.5%, and 1.9% for 2019, down from 2.8%. This was contained in its latest World Economic Outlook, just released at the ongoing spring meeting of the World Bank Group in Washington, D.C., United States of America. Though the new projection still shows a huge leap against the actual 0.8% achieved in 2018 and 0.2% higher than its projections in October last year, it indicated not only a reversal of position, but also a widening gap between the positions of the federal government and the World Bank on the recovery prospects post-recession. The federal government also projected GDP growth rate at about 3.5% in its 2018 budget. Despite the positive figures from the World Bank, the International Monetary Fund IMF has projected that Nigerians' inflation will remain in the double digits in 2018. 
in the April edition of its World Bank Economic Outlook unveiled on Tuesday at the ongoing spring meetings in Washington, D.C., the Brenton Wood Institution said inflation rate will, however, moderate in both years. Nigeria's inflation rate is currently at 13.34 percent in March 2018. The government targets an inflation figure of 12.4 percent in 2018 budget. Oil prices rose on Wednesday, lifted by a reported decline in U.S. crude inventories and by the ongoing risk of supply disruptions. Brent crude oil features were up at $72.07 per barrel, while U.S. crude features were up 49 cents at $67.01 per barrel. In the United States, crude inventories fell by 1 million barrels last week to 428 million barrels, according to a weekly report by the American Petroleum Institute. Official weekly U.S. data will be published by the Energy Information Administration, EIA, on Wednesday. The Nigerian equity market closed in the red, recording a total of 230.170 shares in 4,090 deals. The old share index declined 0.04% to close at 40,772.26 basis points. The market capitalization stood at 14.727 trillion naira at the close of trading, down by 5.930 billion naira. Julius Berger, which led the gainers table, appreciated by 4.05% to close at 27 naira per share. Owanda rose by 9.70% to 9 naira 5 cover per share, followed by Ecobank, which saw its share price appreciate by 2.63% to close at 19 naira 5 cover per share. While Northern Nigeria flour mills rose by 4.58% to 6 naira 85 cover per share. 18 stocks recorded losses with Seplat International Breweries, Wapco and Nigeria Breweries leading the pack. Meanwhile, the top traders table was dominated by Guarantee Trust Bank, Fidelity Bank, First Bank Nigeria Holdings and Japol Oil. And that's all on business news. Fidelia will be back with the rest of the news after the break. Do stay with us. voters card and begin to use that to bargain about the type of person you want to see on February 16, 2019 and March 2nd on the ballot paper. Okay, so we want to focus on people who haven't voted before. It's 100,000 people who are looking to pleasure because that gives us a minimum of 1 million new voters. Instead of to say, oh, uh, my vote will go count now, try vote first, let you see what I will count, you know. Welcome back. African migrants and asylum seekers in Yemen are being subjected to physical and sexual abuse in detention. This is according to Human Rights Watch and the UN Refugee Agency. Human Rights Watch in a statement accused Yemeni government employees of torturing, raping and executing migrants and asylum seekers from the Horn of Africa in a detention center in the southern port city of Aden as well as possibly deporting them out to sea. It said Yemen's interior minister had responded to an HRW inquiry by saying they had dismissed the center's commander and begun transferring migrants to another location. Zimbabwe's government has sacked more than 10,000 nurses who went on strike on Monday 
in an apparently hardline attempt to quell labor unrest. Vice President Constantino Chiwanga said the nurses had refused to return to work after $17 million was released to increase their pay. He rebuked them for not going back in the interest of saving lives. Reviving the health sector has been a key challenge for President Emerson Manangagwa, who recently agreed to pay rises in order to end a doctor's strike. Moving on to sports now, Plato United Football Club on Tuesday missed out on a place in the group stages of the CAF Confederation Cup following a 4 0 defeat against USM Alger in Algeria. The match played at the Stad 5 Gillette was the second leg of their playoff round fixture. The Nigeria Professional Football League champions, who won the first leg 2 1, lost out 5 2 on aggregate. Players from the Premier League champions in weight in Manchester City dominated the Professional Footballers Association Team of the Year announced on Wednesday, occupying five out of 11 spots. City defenders Kyle Walker and Nicolas Otamendi, midfielders David Silva and Kevin De Bruyne, as well as all-time top scorer Sergio Aguero were named in the side. Tottenham Hotspur had three players on the list, including England striker Harry Kane, who made the team for a third straight year, along with Manchester United goalkeeper David Deere. Liverpool forward Mohamed Salah, who has scored 40 goals across all competitions this season, also made the team. Well, that's it on News Now. Many thanks for watching. I am Fidelia Agoncha.